Hello there, this is Tamil, and today I wanted to go over a very, very important question. Should you go to art school? Is it even worth it? And I will share my experiences um, based on like my <laughs> art school and my friends and people I had talked to and teachers and all of that stuff. So there's going to be a lengthy video. If you don't want to watch all of it and you want like a straight answer, um, super simple, don't go to art school, <laughs> that's my personal opinion. Uh, what you should do, uh, I think you can either take online courses, which are specialized for like specific art jobs that you're looking for, or you can find a professional industry person um, who has private tutoring, and that's going to be cheaper. And if you want to meet people, I think you can go to a community college and just do art classes there and meet people that way. Or you can um, attend some sort of like art gatherings that are within your area. You should do bachelor degree, like actual art school, only if you are trying to move to another country. So one of the benefits of getting a bachelor degree is that um, for lawyers and like people who are trying to move you, like let's say Blizzard likes your work and you're working in Spain and they really want to bring you in. To get a visa, um, I would say that having a bachelor degree helps a lot. If you don't have it, it's really hard to move countries uh, and get the visa. Other than that, I really don't think there's like a huge benefit to having art school. And that's it, that's my answer, <laughs> that's my short answer, but I have a longer answer and more nuanced, you know, explanation. I also have notes on my phone, which I will often go over, um, so you can go ahead, like, relax, listen, hopefully this is going to be super helpful, and a lot of this information is basically, like, seven years, almost six, seven years of me condensing my experience with art school and my life, and uh, obviously, just my personal experiences, I hopefully... It's not gonna like go over like super terribly and uh, people are not gonna like burn me on the, on the stadium. So first of all, I wanna say that I finished uh, community college and then I transferred to a, a state um, university, which is like CSU uh, in California. So I finished both of schools in California um, and I came to LA about maybe five years before maybe five or four um, years before going to college. So I was living in LA for like a long, long time and that's how I studied. And um, the community college was like right next to me and there I finished my graphic design. So I started off with uh, regular art. That was my first semester and I really liked it. Um, and I finished AA degree for um, graphic design, which is basically, you finish classes that are regular classes and you finish classes that are for art. And then you take that, um, yeah, US system gives you like a credit system and then you can transfer that to another university. So you can just start kind of like in the middle for university. And once I transferred, when I went to CSU, uh, I went a little bit up North California. So I moved to a different city and there I actually, and decided to study animation, uh, 3D animation. So I really, really wanted to go into Pixar or maybe something like more practical. But at that point I was already like set on doing 2D concept art. Like I really wanted to do that. But when I transferred, I was like, well, I hear a lot of people in concept art, they say, well, they, they need 3D to like learn and um, you really have to have a base for that to be able to do concept art and especially photorealism. So I decided like, let me go to get a degree in something that is like similar, but not similar in a way. So I really didn't want to do animation per se for 3D, but I really wanted to get the base for it in order to use that in my concept art. So that's why that was my thinking. And like, if I like it, I'll pursue that. If I don't like it, I can still use it in my uh, 2D work. So that's why I was like super happy about um, the uh, major that I found. And one of the reasons why I chose that major uh, was because there's a lot of state university um, classes that you can take in degrees, 
but they never focused specifically on 3D. So there's a lot of uh, quote unquote art studio class um, that has some um, animation, some 3D classes, but they're not super heavily focused on that. And the university that I went to has that degree. Like that is the only um, CSU that had that name in the degree. Let me, <laughs> let me get some tea, sorry. Uh, so I went there, I finished it, and I came back to LA, so that was like my short version <laughs> of what I studied. And then after that, uh, I was uh, coming back and I had a little bit of time off, so I had like a year maybe or so, and I really, really sat down and studied my fundamentals because I thought that I'm like behind on my fundamentals and art and drawing. And I actually started taking online courses. So I uh, started doing Drawbox, which is a very famous free, um, free resource for how to draw. And everyone recommends you if you want to start with art, you want to start out with anything. Everybody is like, do Drawbox, do Drawbox. And that's what I did. Um, I started it off before university, like a little bit. I got burned down, I came back, and then I kind of finished it. So that was my um, finishing up that degree, <laughs> that course. Um, and then I was able to find a really good deal. So because I'm from um, Russia, I was able to find a course in Russia that was basically for concept art and drawing. And it was like for six, eight months but because conversion from uh, Russian to English, uh, like money, was huge, I was able to get that course for like a huge discount because LA prices are different. And so I was able to pay for like pretty much a full on drawing classes for eight months or six months straight for basically like $800. I was fully online um, and I would get feedback pretty much every week, like twice a week almost. So it was like a very intense drawing course. So I finished that as well. And uh, there was a second course that I also paid for um, and it was really, really good. And I did not finish that one. I think I had maybe a month or two left and it was just so much homework that I left, like I felt behind and I couldn't finish it. But the amount of knowledge that I got from it, it was like amazing. So, And so how I started with art, I know a lot of people uh, kind of First of all, they ask you, oh, how did you start with art? Well, like, did you doodle a lot as a kid? Like all of that stuff. So uh, my personal journey is kind of dumb uh, because I doodled before, uh, I drew before, but I never thought it's a career or I wanted to do that as a career. And when I was in middle school, <laughs> pretty much in Russia, um, there was like every single class that I would take with art. Uh, we only had one art teacher and she was batch insane. <laughs> and um, like she would have a book for watercolor or something like that and she would give it, it's like a very old, old school book and she really cared for that book. And she gave it to one of our students and he's like, a, like he, he was a dumb kid. He was like always getting in trouble and stuff. And uh, I think he like ripped like a corner from it on accident. And then she started like yelling at him. <laughs> she grabbed the book and started like hitting him with the book. Not like violently, but like, you know, a little bit like a, you know, don't mess our stuff in school. This is like really important book, which is, which was kind of hilarious because she was using the book that <laughs> she's like super precious of. Um, but yeah, so I had that until like fifth grade. And I still remember this one memory when she, uh, she was shown how to paint a boat with watercolor and it's crazy how I have to have this memory after like 20 years almost but um, I was painting and she's like oh this is how you do it and she like showed it to me uh, and then she left and then uh, she comes back and I, I kept like trying to draw and then just like, you ruined everything like how did you do this blah blah like I, I, I set it up or everything for you and it's like I have no idea what you're talking about like I don't know what you want what I'm supposed to do I'm I'm like six seven like I don't know what you want so I was like super sad about that and um but I still had like a lot of passion for art um and then my last next four or five years of art we either didn't 
have art teachers or uh, last art teacher was like a 20 year old kid who just graduated art school and he was a teacher and we were like 10th grade 9th grade like we're you know kids are preparing for exams they're trying to transfer to university they have all these other things to do like important physics and math and SAT and huge huge exams so nobody did any art in any of those classes so nobody it was just a class to just chill and do nothing and it was a it was a like relatively speaking prestigious school so that was my experience with art classes um and then when i was in here uh i transferred to america i finished like a couple of years of um art class and the teacher was kind of like she had like a lot in her plate so she she just gave us like here's gouache mar markers and pencils like draw whatever here's the topic like draw this and so we just kind of did whatever and um, the first real experience with art was me taking um, community college so I was like about 18 and I transferred to a community college that was my first semester first year she ignited like a huge passion for art for me personally and um, yeah I just really enjoyed people in that class like I made so many amazing people that just clicked with me and I was like oh you like this I like that too um whether that would be movies or just food or just anything anything at all I was I felt like uh, I fit in and I felt connected with people for the first time and I decided like I want to keep this going I really want people to be the same like around my life at all times like this this is the best and I pursued art initially when I started not not because I loved art like I liked art but um, one of the reasons was because the people in art are amazing so I want to be around them and um, sadly enough like not a single class after that ever came close to that one year when I made so many like great experiences with people I still had amazing people around me but that first class was like what brought me into art and I never was able to get that experience again it's <laughs> funny enough so the whole class was a 2d uh, design which I didn't know what it was but basically you just do abstract art for pretty much the whole semester with like gouache and acrylics and markers and stuff and I was like oh that's cool and there's a lot of other assignments that were really, really amazing, but um, I enjoyed it. So it was like a lot of fun. And I started with abstract art and then I transferred to the next semester was like 3D design, uh, which I personally hated that class so much. And it was so boring. And practically speaking, the whole class was just building stuff from nothing like foam or cardboard or like whatever supplies we were given. Uh, we are supposed to build stuff and I really did not like anything working with my hands and I still remember to this day we had to buy this foam box and me and my friend were in the park for like maybe four hours straight just sanding down that cardboard and foam to make it look pretty and uh, there's just water and which trying to spray it with water and then sand it down water sand it down and it just took so much time and the one of the assignments was make basically a sculpture but you have to paint it as if it's um, a material so a lot of people did rock so you do foam then you paint it as if it's a rock like marble for example and I was like this is so not what I want to do this is so just ugh. and yeah but simultaneously i was taking graphic design which was just um intro to graphic design and it was basically a photoshop class and that is when i decided this is me this is my life this is perfect because um you have infinite canvas you don't have to pay anything for paint for for pencils like my first art class was 150 dollars uh, for supplies <laughs> That's with the discount of school. A second art class was the 3D graphic de uh, 3D uh, design. That was super expensive as well. So it was so expensive. And that is not including the class fees. And um, 
but for Photoshop class, you just get Photoshop, you get it for free, and then you just do whatever you want. And you didn't have to pay any extra, you just had to bring a flash drive for like 20 bucks just to bring your projects or like save your projects and that's it. And I was like, this is my favorite thing in the world. I wanna do this forever. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I came to graphic design and Photoshop because the digital art was just magic to me and I really enjoyed it. And even though in that class, we didn't really paint a lot. A lot of times we did collages, web design and uh, magazine design and all of that good stuff and that kind of gave me so much fundamentals for composition like to, till this day I think most of my um, kind of quote-unquote power and uh, people praising my composition when like oh this is cool composition I'm like yeah thank you so much um, a lot of times people tell me that and I feel like that's because I was doing that class like that graphic design class of just of putting images together like even making the one of the first projects where make a movie poster for a movie already exists just make something that pick any movie you want make a make a poster for it and you're just rearranging pictures cutting out pictures changing color pictures like it was so much um non-painting work but it taught me so much about composition and web development also like pretty much 90 percent of uh websites where are you supposed to look? What is important? In which order you want the people to look at? And um, that just gave me like so much power and so much learning, you know? And that brings me to the next point that I just wanna really emphasize on is when you go to art school and any school in general, um, that is going to be not just the classes that you need, <laughs> Which is, it's crazy, I know, it's, it's a wild concept, but if you've never been to a school, here's why. Um, they're going to force you to take a bunch of classes that do not matter at all. Not only they do not matter, um, but also um, because people are forced to take pointless classes that they don't like, you're going to be within the same room with other people who also do not care for that class so much they just like don't want to be in there it's like a nurse and she's like in statistics class and she's like oh and there's this whole vibe of people like not giving a fuck about anything you do in class group projects like anything it just kills the entire like point of being in college because i feel like in college you, you're there to meet people who are like-minded to learn from them, make connections, and when you forced to take like statistics 257 and you're with a classmate who's like a photographer and then another person is like in athletics or something or in dance classes and then they want to be actor and they're sitting there with you and you're just kind of like, what am I doing with my life? And um, some of them were great, I'm not gonna lie. So there's a addiction, um, addiction study class i loved it it was my favorite class uh in the world why because the teacher was like so kind and pretty much 90 percent of class that was just us watching documentaries about um how the government abused the, the drugs or like how to recover or like what to watch out for and pretty much every other class would just watch a documentary talk about it write an essay that's it that there was like no reading, no textbook. It was a lot of discussion and trying to do critical thinking. So those classes are great. And then you're forced to take like other classes that are pointless. And also keep in mind, you're gonna be in a class for art as well. So if you, you're you an artist, you're taking art classes and you're taking art class for let's say drawing or, or Photoshop. And there's gonna be like 20 to 30% of the class who don't care for that class. They're gonna interrupt it. They're gonna disrupt it. They're gonna arrive late. They're basically not going to let you learn a lot of times because they're just don't care. So that's one of the downsides. It sucks. Like there's gonna be people who don't care. They come in and they just kill the entire vibe of you trying to pursue stuff. It, it goes away with time because um, the further you go with your program, um, the more people are going to be like specifically in that program with you 
but it's just kind of like a weird vibe. And the biggest gripe um, that I have with this is that um, a lot of times you're not only forced to take classes that you don't want or don't need, um, the classes that are in between that are like, oh, you should definitely take this, this is important for you. For example, InDesign class. Yeah, that was a whole class for InDesign. If, if you've never used InDesign, it is basically a program from Adobe that is only solely focused on making magazines. I had to take a whole class just to learn how to make magazines and it was the most boring thing in the world. And I'm trying to like, like most most people, like I'm trying to like build robots in 3d and i'm trying to paint stuff for like pixar and disney well that's like a super naive dream but like that's what i want to do and here i am making magazines like text and topography and all this other stuff and it's like this is not even fun some of it was fun but like unrelated nonsense sometimes can be fun um but you're forced to take those and i'm like yeah and the biggest gripe that I personally have is if you pay out of pocket because I was poor, uh, the government tells you, okay, you're poor. Here's like a little bit of money for tuition and we're going to cover for your costs for um, just classes in general for like about five years until you finish the, your degree. And that's cool. But if you pay out of pocket, which is not as expensive, it's still expensive, but sometimes they pay out of pocket and you're forced to take I don't know, a walking class. I had a walking class. I had to take a walking class. And it's basically PE class, it's physical stuff. Um, but a lot of times it's just, you're obligated to take it and pay for it just to get a degree that is not gonna help you to get a job. And that is just like insane to me that I'm obligated. And if people are outside of that state, I had a girl from uh, Ukraine, she had to pay three times the tuition. So if let's say a class is $300, she had to pay a thousand for the same class. And I felt like I was not given proper education for free. I was getting it for free and she had to pay a thousand for that. So I think that's just not fair to people. And if specifically you are going to like, let's say move to another state, really think about like if you have the money for it and if it's even worth it personal opinion i don't think it's worth it because paying for private tutoring or um a class that is specialized like let's say brainstorm uh, it's like a famous school for concept art if you do that then that's like way better um i have a problem with art schools this is one of the things that i always tell people about a lot of classes they don't focus on making you a better skillful artist they focus on like trying everything a little bit and trying to be like a fine art person instead of uh, like here's an example a person whose fifth like fifth year of let's say fine art program they probably know about like Picasso and like every other famous artist and Van Gogh and their history because they took art history classes. And when they present their work, they know how their thesis is going to work and what their artwork is about. And they're going to tell you the whole story about the meaning behind it. But they can't, most of them, not, not all of them, but they can't shade a sphere properly with one light in the room they can't create a three-point perspective with for like you tell them like do the most simple thing in the world just like draw 10 boxes in perspective they will not be able to do that because a lot of times they just focus on the idea that you're trying to present with art and th here's two examples that on three examples i'll give you great three examples of uh, what kind of I'm talking about. So first of all, my friend was in oil painting class that was in college. And here's how you can be political, but in the right way. And uh, it was like to make, uh, the assignment was to make a very controversial, like moving piece or whatever. And uh, because oil is very like long drying, um, they had like a whole month or two months to do it. 
And so, so she basically had a, a flag, American flag, and it was burning halfway. And then there was like a red, and of course it's like a Germany Nazi thingy over there. So it's like half America, half Nazi, because it's burning, blah, blah, blah. Like society is corrupted, like, you know, and that was when um, the last election was going on. And no matter what your political beliefs are, I don't mind anything. But for, for me personally, that looked like so typical. Like I've seen it probably a billion times before. People saying how, oh, this president is bad or this president is bad and our America is going downhill or like, like whatever stuff you hear on the news or people who barely know anything about what's going on in history and all that good stuff. Um, but that was like exactly what the art school wanted. They just wanted like controversial, smart ideas, but not too controversial because it's like such a cliche idea. Uh, and the teacher really liked it. I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like, how did you come up with this? Um, so that's one example of how they want you to be political, um, but they don't really care about your skills, but they also don't want you to be too political. Because I think of Jim Carrey, let's let's say most people like Jim Carrey probably, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then if, if she painted him in like a uniform from Germany and uh, did something else on there. I think a lot of people would be super pissed about it and the teacher would fail her. But because it's popular to be like, America, it's weird, it's, everything is don't, going downhill, she was kind of safe. So I think that's like one example of how um, it just doesn't make sense when people, they want you to be controversial, but they <laughs> don't want you to be controversial. Um, another second thing is that I had a buddy of mine Super cool dude. Uh, it was in university already, uh, and he was doing his art program. His final like last efforts to finish his degree. Um, I think it was like a year or two, and he is in love with um, Native American culture. Like whatever had to do with tribes, Native American like tools, history. He was like super super into it. Like it was his favorite thing in the world, and uh, he loved it. He's like, I want to embrace it. I want to like, you know, uh, talk about it. And it was like really, really, really interesting. And he was super invested in there. Not only that, he would reach out to tribes. He would do interviews with them. Um, he would, uh, for his final, he wanted to create like a tool that will be similar to Native American. And he was asking them like, how would you do it? Is this okay? Is How does that look? Like basically trying to get as closely as possible to that information and kind of bring out the culture and share it with the world. He was born in US, but uh, he was Asian. So he was Asian, but he never was in Asia. He was never, you know, born there. He doesn't know the language. Um, but he was born here and he's Asian and he loved Native American culture. And I feel like that's like super beautiful how, you know, American melting pot. It's like the cliche saying of how everything is being mixed up and everyone, you know, if you appreciate someone else's culture and they really care for it, that's amazing. You should celebrate that and everyone should be celebrate that. And every tribe he reached out to, they were like so respectful and they were like, thank you for like bringing this out. Like, thank you for really trying to get this right because other people don't care um so yeah that was the thing and the teacher just like completely forbid it um the teacher was not part of the tribe the teacher was not native american it was just like old lady that's it she was just like <laughs> small town old lady from i don't know california or texas or whatever normal city in america like she was not from Europe, she was not from anywhere else, just like a regular woman, completely forbid it, said no, uh, almost failed him, he almost didn't graduate because of that. And I think that's like one of those things when people say, um, let me get some tea. When art classes are political, that's what people mean. A lot of times is there's just certain topics that they just don't allow you to do even if you do them respectfully even if you do if you really care for it um they have like a 
specific <laughs> trajectory as to where it's okay um, to be political and there's parts that are like not okay to be political um, so that was like really sad to him and he just gave up on that and uh, he did a completely different project I don't remember what it was it wasn't cool he, I felt like he didn't have passion for it he just finished it just to finish it got an A actually for that for that class he got an A because he did what the teacher wanted and he graduated and that was it so that was uh, that's a good example of why I don't recommend going to art school for like guidance as to what is good art and <laughs> learning because that's what feedback that they give you is just something if they don't like something they give you just don't do it ever um, and third example that I like is I was uh, often coming to this other class that my buddy was working at is for Photoshop but I wasn't part of that building I was in a different building and I would often come and just kind of chillax there and um, work on my projects for 3D and she would be working on hers and one of the teachers was basically saying hey like um, they, they needed to make a composition of like some sorts and she basically what she did was just uh, Jesus <laughs> sitting in the chair and instead of wine it was like soda and like Basically, it was like a, and he was in front of a TV, and that's like a huge commentary on like <laughs> American society. How, what, what modern Jesus do? And I kid you not, when he was asking every single step of the way, not like in a bad way, but in a, so this chair is red and it looks like a chair from the 90s. Why do you think that you put it there? Why do you think you put that? can of soda over there like what does that mean um and then she had to give like a proper explanation for like 10 minutes explaining why that certain thing is in the picture and the picture looked like a person picked up uh photoshop for the first time like first year photoshop so like the teacher did not care for the skill and <laughs> learning photoshop at all all they cared about was what's the real message and what's the behind the message and what's the behind behind the message so that was like super often uh, happening and I, I went to like three different schools um, had a bunch of like 10 15 different teachers and that was not uncommon teachers focus on things that they should be focusing on in my personal opinion when they create art um, you, I think you can do both. You can do a little bit skill, like you can tell them like, hey, your light doesn't look right, can you fix that? And you can also be like, so what's the meaning behind this piece and why is it important to you? And you can give your like own interpretation and that's like totally fine. Like I'm not saying all art should be pointless and meaningless and <laughs> it shouldn't be controversial. Like that's totally fine. Um, but it's just crazy to me how um, a lot of teachers, they just focus on just one aspect of it. And specifically, most teachers are like in their 40s, 50s, and um, they don't just don't use Photoshop or anything, uh, any of the modern tools. And so that's just that's just my opinion and the way I see it. So that's one of the reasons don't go to art school. And to briefly mention how my major was like, so um, obviously I... <laughs> I talk bad stuff about, you know, art major. What about my major? Like, cause I went to 3D development. I went to game development. I went to animation. Like what's, what's it like? So I think it could be divided into kind of three categories of people that go in there. So if you ever want to go to game dev or anything similar to that, here's, here's what I have learned and here's what I see. Uh, divides into three categories so first uh, very very few girls that go there and a little bit you know a little bit guys the dreamers so to speak those people are like if I hard, hard work hard enough I will go to Disney and I'll work at Pixar and they have this dream at least since they were like five years old and they don't know anything about the industry they haven't 
asked anyone what the actual job was like, but they just kind of do super, super silly, goofy stuff. And they really, really, obviously nothing wrong with those people. I'm just like describing like a stereotype. Um, they're just like super into it and they can't take critiques well. They, they're they super like, imagine the person who, I, I actually had a person like that. So one of my roommates, um, I kid you not, she would come out only to eat ramen and food and goes back to her room for the rest of the week <laughs> and just like watch animation, anime and do homework. And that's it. That's all she did, like anti-social kind of deal. And that's all she did. That's and then when she was in class, she was like super trying to make friends. It's, it felt like a middle schooler kind of deal. Uh, not a lot of social skills, super kind of happy dubby um, person who doesn't realize what like actual world is like. And you could tell by just simply talking about anything serious, any serious issues, like let's say voting or rent control or US history or anything like that. They, they just they didn't know anything. And they just kind of like, I like cartoons and I really want to do animation. So that's like the first stereotype. The second stereotype that I had are people who are <laughs> people who play video games, who are like super, super into video games, and they thought and, and they didn't have anything else in their life. And they decided, well, I like playing video games, so I will become a video game maker. And um, when I tell you that on the first week <laughs> of school, one of our chair uh, chairman pe person said, please wear deodorant. I do not kid you right now. They told us, please wear deodorant and take a shower every other day. I beg you. Um, so that's, uh, if you've been to anime convention, that is the stereotypical person who is there, like in my class. And, and now there's like 20 of them in the same room. And best part, in my major, uh, we didn't have any any windows, so it was just a box of 30 computers that are heating up and 20 dudes who barely shower uh, making quote-unquote video games. <laughs> so that was that was kind of like the, the crowd that I had to... No, it wasn't the worst. Some of, some of them were cool, and I made friends a little bit, but it was just kind of... It was an interesting experience. Let's just <laughs> let's just say that. And then the third stereotype is the super kind of uh, snobby program tech bros that are like, I know everything about this program, and you shouldn't even talk to me. So most of the time, it was either people who did 3D, like modeling, sculpting, or programming, or engine like programming technical artists look anything to do with like high level like math or statistics or coding or heavy 3d and all of that stuff um those were the people they were like super super i know everything you don't know nothing and uh, a very stereotype like if you've ever seen a show uh, let's say rick and morty like they're basically they're like gods and they can do whatever they want because they know um, you're gonna ask ask their help at some point and so because I'm so good I don't really have to put effort into being nice with people and you can just like I don't have to talk to you and <laughs> it was like very frustrating to work for those people not because they're not good but because they're just insufferable as human beings so and I'm not saying I'm perfect I'm also a horrible human being I, I think i should do better and talk to people better but i'm just describing like what my experience was i had at least one kid that that, that was like super exactly that it, it's just super snobby uh know-it-all kind of kid and uh, would interrupt the teacher all the time or like oh you can do this in this way and um there's all this 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 one guy in class who always um if you don't know anything about 3d world is that there's programs that are like normal, that are industry standard that everybody has to use for work. And there's this one person who was like, how about we use Blender? 
and Blender is like this free software that is for 3D modeling. And they're always like, can I do this in Blender? Can I do this in Blender? Can I do this in Blender? Like every time. And it just doesn't end. It just doesn't end and it's just going and going and going. Just to explain to you how far some of these people were from like reality and being self-sufficient adults. Uh, my favorite story that I've ever, <laughs> ever seen. So it was during the, the 2020 and uh, it was all online classes and it was game design class, which is basically you make um, board games with your uh, classmates and you test them out and you see which game works, which one doesn't. And it's really, really cool. Um, one of the classes that I had to take that I didn't want to take, there was supposed to be an assignment given to us on Saturday or Sunday. And because the, the software or like whatever the website that we use to give out uh, homework, it just didn't work or they, they hit it like to find homework sometimes it's hard because it's hidden. So nobody did that assignment at all. And the teacher went off about it. Like, oh my God, you guys, he's like, I'm giving you this so much, like so little homework. You just guys not doing this, blah, blah, blah. He was like super pissed, understandable. Um, and so he told everybody, he's like, okay, I give you one hour, just like write anything you can, um, you know, write this, this and that, and then just turn it in, turn it in whatever you have. Um, and then we can move on. Because I have to credit credit you guys for something, and so there's this one guy who always asks like the dumbest questions in the world, and yeah, obviously he asked a dumb question. So it was probably around mark um, fifty nine minutes fifty eight, and he was basically saying, "But I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I can't turn this in." like during the zoom call and, and the teacher was like i said just turn in anything blah 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 and and he said that he'll basically give zero to anyone who didn't turn anything in and if you give something you can get some point of credit so that you can actually get going with class and he didn't turn anything because he's like i'm not finished with this i still have like this much i only have like five paragraphs he didn't turn in anything and then the time passed and it's like silence and he goes but i didn't turn in anything am i gonna get a zero yeah because i i told everybody to turn something in just turn anything anything and that, that doesn't matter like what you turned in i needed something and so he didn't turn anything he starts like arguing with the teacher in front of everybody <laughs> for like 10 minutes they're just like going back and forth it's like but but I didn't know and and the, the assignment didn't show up on the website and he's like yeah I know we talked about this I needed like turn something in and then um they were like basically I, I don't know what the kid wanted even because it was the easiest thing in the world just turn something in and you're gonna get some point point of credit but he just refused to do it and then he started arguing with the teacher. For 10 minutes, everybody's just like waiting for the class to start because of this kid. You'll encounter those people, which is okay. It's part of life and it's good to learn um, about other people's work styles that they have, let's just say that, <laughs> and how they work and how they organize themselves. Um, and I think it's good to see how weird some people are so that you are prepared. But uh, that is another thing, like sometimes you have to be within a group project with those people. You will be working with them and you're going to have to learn how to work with them. And it is painful to say the least. So that's kind of an idea <laughs> as to how classes sometimes go. <laughs> and let's talk about classes in general and a lot of people think or believe that when you go to art school you get some of this sort of special environment of some sort or special skills or knowledge that you're given um, that will be separating you from when you do your own research and study and all of that and I'll give you examples of real world, like different classes from different teachers, from different schools, of how it usually goes, pretty much 99% of
half the time. <laughs> and I, I kid you not, this is how it went pretty much always, with some caveats, but this is how it went. Let, let's say it's a class for um, concept art, whatever, anything, character, concept, concept art. The teacher comes in and he shows you a bunch of slideshows of like, um, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is cool. Um, now I'm gonna give you a topic. And the topic is, let's say, futuristic industrial revolution. And now in a week, you're gonna have to turn it in. And you can come to me if you need any feedback. And there we go. Usually start with silhouette and then play with shapes, find references and go, go do your stuff. That's it. That is the entire quote unquote learning experience. And they understand why they do that. Because a lot of times the best learning curve is you just do the thing, you fail, you learn why you failed and you do it again. Simple enough. That makes sense. Um, except <laughs> you paying like five thousand dollars for a class so you expect a little bit more but pretty much that was the it for all of my classes graphic design here's an idea make a poster for a movie and turn it in next project hey this project is going to be make your own website but imagine that that website is for a gallery or for a product let's say mcdonald's make that mcdonald's website that is it that is, I'm telling you, that is it. I'm, I'm not joking right now. Anyone who goes to art school right now can tell me, please prove me wrong. Because every single class, they just give you an assignment. Do X. Sometimes they show how to do X, like on their own. Like the teacher's gonna be like, here's how you do X. Now you do it. And then you turn it in and they give you like a little bit feedback and tell you like, you could have done this better. And then they give you like a B or an A. That's it. If you put a little bit of effort, they give you a that is entirely all of the classes and i don't think you learn anything that way as much as if if you're doing private tutoring one-on-one -on -one, because the one-on-one -on -one tutoring you can actually like learn from the professor but if it's a class of like 40 people you just kind of do the project on your own basically and and some teachers are different. Some teachers give you like a little bit more feedback. For example, a really cool part of my graphic design program was that, um, shout out to Professor Kamimura, was a really great teacher of mine. Um, he did project, but at the end, uh, in like in a week or two, we would compile all of our work of like 30 people and we would show it to everyone and say, here is the work. What can be improved? What is the critique? Or what do we really like about this project? And I've never learned more in my personal like experience in my life than from those like gatherings. That was the best part when I was learning. I saw the same exact topic, same exact idea, and I saw what worked and what didn't. I saw other people's mistakes and I saw my mistakes more. And that just gave me so much more knowledge as to why like it works and why it doesn't. And um, that's the only pretty much, well, almost, but that is pretty much the only teacher that really emphasized on that and really tried to get as much feedback as possible. And a lot of times people just raise their hand to say like whatever BS, it sounds like complete crap. And they're like, oh, I like the color red but you could have used green because green is a better color. Like a lot of people say that, <laughs> which is super, super bump, <laughs> like it bumps me out. But um, there's gonna be 20 dumb comments and there's one good one that is gonna help you to become like a better person, a better artist. And waiting for that comment, I think it really helps. I think it's really cool that it was given a chance to us. Um, another thing is that when I went to my university for my 3D modeling, because it's not an art-based kind of um, major, uh, even though you have to do 3D art and animation, I think it's really beneficial to see other people work. 
not a single teacher pretty much showed us how other people are doing their stuff and it was kind of bugging me because uh, my whole graphic design career I was like oh like how others are doing it like let me learn but for 3d specifically it was very kind of protective of how other people are doing to not make them look bad or whatever and um, I'm not sure why they did that specifically but uh, basically for three years of my studying quote-unquote I did not know if I'm doing a good job I did not know if I'm failing class I don't I don't know I'm, I'm getting A's and B's and C's and I guess but I didn't know what's badass I didn't know what's cool because nobody showed what other people are doing I could come up to people and say like, hey, what you're looking at, like what you're working on. And they would show me their stuff, but most of the time it's the people you know, like your friends. But in class, there was not a single like group critique. And I think that is the most important part of growing as an artist. And that's what I recommend doing if you can get it. Uh, group critiques are highly important and beneficial. If you think that if you're going to a private um, school for art, you're gonna get a better class experience, I will tell you probably not. My teacher who worked as a teacher at the same time, he was working at community college, which is in US considered kind of like a low tier uh, education system. It's cheap, there's not a lot of people, the campuses are smaller you know, all that stuff. And then he was working at Art Institute, which used to be like a really highly regarded private art school that is specifically for art. And he was teaching the same exact class, the same exact way in both of those institutions. There was no difference. It was exactly the same. And he told me the only difference is the people who are in the Art Institute they're just more competitive and they want to learn more because they are there specifically to do art. In community colleges, a lot of people are there, they just don't know what their major is at, they just like kind of flip-flopping through life, they're figuring themselves out. But in Art Institute, it was literally like, they're there to learn, they're there to do the work, they're there to learn um, specific skills for their major, their career, and that was it. That was the only difference that was there between those two classes. So if you're thinking going to like a private art school and maybe you're going to get more art homework compared to like a regular school, um, but that's it. I, In my personal opinion, I don't think you're going to get like better education because most teachers, um, they're going to make pretty much the same-ish money if they go to private or not private art schools or community colleges. The salary is not like a huge gap, so you're not going to get like better quote-unquote professors. I've met amazing professors in my community college. They were like really amazing, they were really, really great, and I learned so much. And I've known people who went to private schools and they had like the same experience that some teachers are like really bad and some teachers are really good and sometimes it just adds, adds up to you if you want to like take it in and a lot of times in art classes they will tell you if you're painting or whatever they're gonna tell you here is a video from this youtuber who explained this thing really good go watch it Half of my digital painting classes were just them linking a video from like Cynics, from Marco Bushi, from like different famous YouTubers. Go watch their video. It's really explained well there. I'm like, that's cool. Thanks. Um, why am I going to art school for this? <laughs> so that you can link me to a free video? Like, that is insane to me. So, a uh, thing that I can tell you is learn how to research art tutorials. Uh, find a really good way to find them. Subscribe to different channels to see so that YouTube recommends you better art tutorials. But there's no secret information in art schools that they give you at all. 
most of the time it's completely like way below what you're gonna get online and that kind of makes me sad because in a way the teachers are becoming less relevant and less important in art education because of that because there's so many great resources on youtube now your teacher is competing with thousands of youtubers whose their entire existence is dedicated to teaching art and making good videos that are condensed that work great for learning and here's your teacher who hasn't been in the industry for five years and they they paint good they paint okay um, but they're not going to compare to a billion of youtubers or a billion of other people online from like korea or japan teaching how to do anime because that's just not feasible so that is one of those things that i should just really emphasize like a lot of times most of art classes are just gonna link you to a youtube video that's it you should take it as you will um but a lot of times my teachers i had one teacher um i'm not gonna say which one but that teacher um their work was as if it was me first time opening photoshop <laughs> that was their level of work but they were a teacher and they were trying to teach me how to do art and i think that's i mean it comes with the territory some artists are better sometimes a little bit more advanced but they were just really not good <laughs> and i felt bad because i didn't want them to feedback me and because the stuff they told me were like wrong and i was like yeah okay i'll do that so they would like ruin in a way my pieces so that was kind of awkward and it sometimes happens it's okay but again it goes back to the whole um we're paying out of pocket to be taught by those people and unfortunately they're just not that good sometimes because to be um, an art teacher you don't have to be drawing sometimes from what I've heard you can go and get masters in art masters in fine art and not take like a single drawing class or just, or take them but barely put any effort as long as you pass all the art history and you memorize all the names you can get a masters in art I then take your uh, art credentials and apply for school and do good on the interview and then you're gonna get the job which is super insane to me but that is unfortunately the case some teachers are like that and here's another thing that i just briefly want to mention um you're gonna have this one teacher that will almost fail you because they're bad at their job. And I, I realized this 100%. Um, this is not healthy to be talking about other teachers like that because it's a small industry and all of that stuff, right? Uh, but I'm just trying to be honest with you. And I really, really want to emphasize this, that it's this is just how life is. And that's okay, sometimes it'd be like that. But there's this one teacher. Uh, I had to take coding class for my 3d design like environment i had to take 3d class um the coding class even though i was in 3d and animation um major that goes back to again taking classes you don't really need but they are forcing you to and it was a coding class and it was quote unquote intro to coding class and when i tell you I never coded in my life. I am 300% being honest. Like I've never opened a console, the coding console in my life. I've never knew what variables are. I don't know anything at all. I have no idea. I just never done any of that. Maybe I've done one class in the fifth grade in Russia and that's it. And I had that base of knowledge 
and I had to study uh, Unity. Unity is a game engine. A lot of indie games using Unity, and it was a coding class for Unity on how to, you know, do that class. And so my friend, my buddy of mine, and that class is required to graduate, by the way. Um, my buddy pretty much failed that class. The only reason why she passed was because there was a fire in university. Like entire town pretty much got burnt down and they canceled all of the grades and they just passed everybody. And that is the only reason why she graduated because the pass rate for that class was 10%. I Let me repeat that. Out of 30 people for a class that is required of you to pass, to graduate, 10% people pass that class. And reason being was the person who was teaching that class was Clark. And that's his real name. You can look it up. I don't care anymore. I'm just being real. That person, when I tell you that he just came in, opened presentation on Google Points, read what it says on the Google Points, told everyone to just write notes and said, now you can code, close the laptop and sat there for the next three hours. That is basically what was going on. And even people who have four years, I got super lucky when I was taking that class. I was taking with someone else. I was still failing, but my uh, partner, I just got lucky. He uh, coded for four years prior and he was still having troubles and he, we barely passed. The level of understanding code that was required for that class is, I would say, two, three years, maybe two, three years, uh, maybe four, but it was entry level class and you can't really expect people who do art to be knowing any of that stuff. And I, again, emphasizing this one more time, you had to take that class. And if you don't take that class and you don't pass it, you don't graduate. And I think that there's going to be at least one class in five years of your art school that you will have to take that you're going to barely pass with a high chance of retaking it and just be aware of it, be vigilant, talk to your teacher if they're not a complete piece of garbage. <laughs> um, because I, someone is going to tell me in the comments, someone's going to tell me, Hey, well, why don't you just visit the teacher after hours to just like kind of ask and explain and stuff and just talk to them like a human being. Um, there was 20 people outside waiting in line to talk to him. And anytime you get a chance to talk to that person, he basically just, oh, just like figure it out. Like, what do you mean? I just showed you everything on the PowerPoint. He was basically expecting people to know code and you can just, which is, I get that. Sometimes you can explain to a person how to code and then you're going to be like, I just don't get it. Like they're not putting like enough effort to try to understand the problem or they're not trying to like solve it in different ways or you're basically not um, using all the material you've been given and coding is complicated sometimes it takes a while to register a problem and you maybe can use a different mathematical method to solve that problem but when i tell you like you don't have any tools to solve it because you don't know how to write code to even start code or how do you start a code like a person who like ask your mom do you know how to start code and and code how do you run a code like let's say you have like you have a chunk of code that works it's perfect it's amazing it's not yours they just gave it to you can you even run it i can't because i've never done it in my life 
because nobody taught me how to do it in my life. And now it's expected to not only know that, but also write it. And so that's just one of the <laughs> fun experiences that I've had uh, when I was in my university years. And again, it goes back to sometimes they just kind of tell you, just like, do, go do stuff. And one of my assignments, for example, from my modeling class was um, just pick a gaming controller, any gaming controller that you can, that is like a little bit complex, and just model it. And it's like, okay. And before that, I only made cubes. <laughs> like I can make a cube in the program. And that's it. And then they're like, yeah, just go make a gaming controller. And all of the people's controllers looked square. Like everyone was doing like a PlayStation controller. Nobody knows how to align it properly. Nobody knows how to put the buttons properly. Nobody knows how to make a hole inside like the controller to put the button in. Nobody knows how to curve the sides. None of that was explained. And they're just kind of like, do your best, you know, learn, maybe YouTube. And that's it. Most of the time, that is it. And I really hope that you don't have to experience this. Um, but that is just one of the fun things that about universities that sometimes they don't teach you as much. Sometimes they teach you too much. But just something to watch out for. Uh, my biggest gripe that I have is that no matter um, how far you are in the program and how good you are, most of the time they just tell you to do realism. For, for 3D especially, like in my major, they were telling you to do 3D. And for example, for texturing class, there's a, there was a four hour, I don't wanna lie, but it was at least four hours or three hours of tutorial on how to texture a lamp in program. And you just had to sit there, watch the video that is on YouTube, it's free. And then you just copy button for button of what they're doing. And after two hours, I'm just like, it looks the same. It looks exactly the same, what am I doing? And so I did that for four hours and I turned it in and I got a B minus because there was like some stuff missing. I'm like, what do you mean stuff missing? I was doing exactly what the video was telling me. And that's for 3D, but for 2D or any of the fine art, all the time, it happens all the time. They tell you, oh, this is not realistic. This is not how it looks in the picture. This is not this and that. A lot of times, all of the teachers, they encourage you to just do realism, which, I totally get is A, easier to grade, B, fundamentals are usually connected to realism. You don't want to start like stylized too fast so that you actually learn anatomy and stuff. I get that. That's totally understandable. I'm not going to argue with that. But after pretty much every single class, everything is realism. And when you look at stuff you want to work on or stuff that you love, most of the time nobody sits there in an art class and goes, you know what? My favorite thing in the world was the Call of Duty uh, style of like how their like wrinkles of the clothes looked exactly like in the World War II or whatever. Like none of the realism stuff really impresses most people that are artistic. Average person is impressed by realism. Like average person is gonna look at a painting and goes like wow so many details it looks just like in the photo but for artists i think we all get off to this amazing stuff that is stylized like people love spider verse there's the biggest boom of style of like comic book art style and one of the reasons why that movie is so iconic is because it's stylized it's not realistic it has realistic light and realistic maybe textures but other than that most of it is super simplified some of the background stuff is like hand painted everything is um very specific and they don't really let you develop that in school like i have seen so many talented artists in classes that just don't 
make stuff because most of the time the teachers don't allow you to make stuff. All of it, just realism, 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 study muscles, study landscape, study light has to be exactly like in the picture. And it's great for fundamentals, but once you pass that stage, let's say it's your third, fourth year, you can't get a job just doing realism drawings because for realism uh, most of the time you're going to use 3d and for stylistic stuff then you can paint a little bit right you can vis vis dev visual development all that stuff but for that you have to experiment so much but they just don't let you and i think that's just a huge missed opportunities in art school is that most of the grading just goes into realism and most of the 3d stuff goes into realism and uh, one of the biggest artists i think for in my opinion the person who even never even worked in the industry from what i've heard cynics s-i-n-i-x one of the biggest youtubers he has such a great sense of shapes and design and experimenting with the uh, visual language that is, is so impressive to not see him work in any of the studios because he always experiments he always makes something different and weird and weird faces long faces short faces like big muscles short hands like he, he does everything to push himself and when you do any of the 3d work I never got a single time any feedback. I don't know how it is for other people. It's just from my experience. Not a single time I've ever gotten a feedback on how my shapes look, on how my colors look, on how any of my stuff visually looks. And they just cared about pressing the right buttons and if my topology looked right. And that's it. They didn't care about anything else. And that is, I think, the biggest um, problem with at least the major that I went to. And just in general, a lot of times the teachers and people in the major, they're not going to correct you if your stuff looks boring. Because a lot of times you can make realistic things. You can make a super great rendered face or a car or whatever. But okay, you've done that. Now what? It just looks like the photo. It just doesn't, it doesn't, it's not interesting to anybody to look at. And I think that's one of the biggest, um, like, pet peeves that I have is, and I fall into that too. Like, a lot of times I just draw whatever um, that doesn't really, it's not interesting to look at. And I just draw it just to practice. But I feel like it's not really helping <laughs> you progressing as a as an art person. Because what's the point of drawing good if you can't really convey anything like you know those um if you've ever picked up a camera and they try to do photography class a lot of times they tell you like oh just take pictures and they start taking pictures of like a cup on the table they take a picture of a like a pen um on the table and food just whatever boring mundane stuff that you see and they're not trying to experiment with colors they're not trying to experiment with composition they're just well, here's here's a flower. Take a, takes a picture of a flower, and I think that's like equivalent of um, art programs and fine art. Is that it's just wow, it just looks correct. <laughs> now what? And I, I don't know where it's supposed to go, especially if you're trying to find your inner voice and inner artistic ability. It's just not gonna go anywhere, in my opinion. One of the other things that I really think is important is health. I don't think it's the fault of the, the art school or anyone in particular, but I have seen a lot of people in pain. I still have my injury from my shoulder. I was really, really grinding and I really pushing myself to do more art and I neglected my health for a little bit and I still pay the price. So my back is killing me in the morning pretty much every day. Um, and I used to draw on a Cintiq and so this muscle in the shoulders is still tense uh, even when I try to relax especially if I draw for like a longer than one hour it's still in pain and um, I wish there was a class 
where you would go into uh, things that you should do as an artist to keep your health kind of um, in, in check. And I've seen this from many, many other artists that have been drawing for 10 years, 15 years. They're like, I have injuries that are permanent and there's no way to fix them. And one of the reasons uh, why they're there is because you go to art school for what, five, six years, maybe four, and you sit and you work and you sit and you work and you sit and you work and you don't have time to eat properly. You don't have time to cook properly or work out, nothing. You're just doing boring stuff and you work and grind and work and grind. And then you have major back and spine issues. So this has nothing to do with art school in general, but uh, when people tell you, yeah, you should be working out and you should be active, they actually, <laughs> they actually mean like you have to be active and working out like for real, like at least once or twice a week, like intense workouts where you are like doing a little bit every day is better. But if you don't have time for that, like, at least one hour of workout every like two three days you have to do it to keep yourself like occupied keep the blood glow going and um that's just the amount of homework they give you the amount of sitting that you have to do um i think is just insane so that's another thing that i think kind of destroys art students from art schools is they give you a lot of homework and you have to sit in class to do work. Um, I'm thankful for my graphic design class that allowed you to just kind of roam around from time to time and just look at people's work. Um, that kind of keeps you like a little bit active and walking. And yeah, so that's just my advice. You can go to art school, but if you go, make sure um, that you work out and properly eat. That is very, very, very important how I got a few jobs and why art school is important because I'm I keep bashing on art school and saying how bad it is but what if it's actually good well here's one of the things is doing art schools is great if you need connections and I think a lot of times you do need connections so if you are an art school or you're trying to just be ahead of um, in life that is one of the things that is super, super important. You have to make friends, you have to make connections. And I think biggest opportunity is to do that in art school. And a lot of people who I've met were, who were an art major, they were very, very antisocial and they try to keep it to themselves. They're kind of like in a bubble, which is normal. Um, but when you do that, you're not gonna go far. So my first job, like a real graphic design job was I met a friend in college in 2016. We both went to university um, like three, four years later. And in there, her teacher, who's not even in my major, her teacher knows a person in like HR person in a company for t-shirts. And I spoke with her just hanging out and he was there and he knew that I was doing graphic design and he recommended me to that HR and I had an interview and then I got the job. And I don't think I would have ever gotten that job in my life, no matter my skill, no matter my education, if I just didn't know that girl, if I didn't know that teacher. So, and I think pretty much 80, 90% of jobs, they, they happen because of that. And um, another example of a job that I did not get because I didn't have a connection. Um, very, very short. Um, I had a friend who was in the same major as me for 3D. And um, I was like a super, super hardcore Photoshop guy. Like, I'm like, I wanna paint everything. I wanna do everything. And um, I would even abandon some of my 3D homework and turn in 2D stuff because I was like trying to hope to learn more and practice more, which is like normal. And uh, some of the teachers were like, okay with it. 
but pretty much every teacher knew like oh like Tamil does a bunch of like 2D stuff like he doesn't even like 3D that much uh, which was true I'm, like I wasn't super fan of it but I would still learn it right um so that was the case and then there was a job opportunity for I believe it was Fortnite or something to do with that Epic Games company and it was for a 2D job it was for um, Photoshop graphic design stuff that had to do with Fortnite and I did not get that job and I didn't get recommended um, some other person got recommended who uh, wasn't as good at Photoshop and they didn't even want to do that job they were like whatever about it and the reason why they got it was because they just were friends with the teacher and the teacher just kind of like huh who I just got an opportunity from my um, from my old friend they're looking for people who need graphic design stuff uh, so who can I call and then immediately just like oh I, I know that person like I'll I'll give her the job and recommend her so a lot of times it's not about your skill it's not about um, how good you are it's about who you know and it it's really unfair I think people should be basing off jobs based on skill but the, the older you get the more you understand that that's just how it works and unfortunately you just play the game and that's it that was that was my story of how um, two times on that job opportunity happened or didn't happen um, mostly because you just know somebody again you don't really get those connections unless you are in university and when you're in university you just start building those you know somebody who knows somebody and uh, that's how most graduates people they find jobs is through that they graduate and their teacher finds somebody and then they get recommended um, another thing that I love about uh, going to art school is again there's some good things is you get to meet industry professionals I've had at least two encounters uh, one was like a really cool concept artist guy uh, who worked at a real game company and I learned a lot from just talking to him he had like a zoom meeting with us and uh, another guy was a Pixar animation guy who was working for about five years already there and uh, he was an ex graduate uh, from that university and he came back to kind of share his experience oh like this is how I do it um, then I had uh, a lecture I think in the hallway uh, from a guy who was a storyboard artist uh, in Los Angeles who worked on pretty much all of the Fast and Furious movies a lot of Marvel stuff and he just talked about like oh this is how I did it this is the connection I made this is the school that I went and you can just ask them a bunch of questions which is great I think if it was solely that like art schools are great if you want to make those connections and you talk to people and you connect on LinkedIn uh, you can do that in, with social media as well uh, connect with people talk to them but it just doesn't feel the same and it doesn't hit the same and if there's a person you've met in life you just have more trust and you're kind of like oh yeah I've met that guy like he probably is good like let me recommend him scholarships and payments a lot of people talk about like how much money can you get for scholarships personally I've never gotten a single scholarship at all um, so my biggest gripe with scholarships is that it is possible to get them but they're not guaranteed so there's like a thousand scholarships you can apply for but they pretty much just pick and choose who deserves it which is not stable in my opinion and I really would not go to art school hoping to get a bunch of scholarships that will cover everything um, I've even applied for a few scholarships that were like in my zone in my expertise there was a scholarship for a t-shirt company and I have worked by that time I was already working at a t-shirt company I worked on Marvel shirts uh, DC shirts Disney shirts Star Wars like I've worked in the actual company plus um, previously before that I won uh, an award from Hot Topic so there was a art contest 
for Hot Topic for Invader Zim movie coming out, and they've won uh, the contest, and my shirt design was sold in Hot Topic, like every single Hot Topic in America, I was getting um, a little bit money, residuals, and all that stuff, like, and I've had graphic design, uh, degree by then so I'm like oh no way I'm not gonna get this scholarship for a t-shirt company like I'll write them like oh this is what I did and this is my journey and I really want to like get into more shirt designs and I love illustration and art and this is my you know stuff um, so it was just talking about that stuff and that scholarship went for two years so once a year they would award somebody and I applied for both years and <laughs> I didn't get either I didn't get either of those. I'm like, who else is has more like? Because I was just by the time I was in university, I had so much t-shirt, quote unquote, experience and cool story. I think, in my opinion, that I'm like, I don't think anybody else has that amazing experience like I did. That isn't in university right now. Like, there's no way someone else won this award for hot topic there's no one else probably who worked on star wars shirts uh who is in university right now because i think i was like a little bit ahead um but no just i didn't get it um twice in a row and maybe i wrote wrote it wrong maybe i wasn't just good enough but for whatever reason it didn't happen and i thought that i completely was in it but i wasn't and um, that's okay too but uh, that's just like my experience with scholarships. Never got any. Um, the only thing I was getting was FAFSA. And that's basically if you're poor, then um, government, you will cover for your tuition and give you a little bit more money, uh, like on top of that, of whatever is left over from those classes. Um, you have to be full time for that. So 12 units. Uh, each class is usually three to four units. So I had to do be 12 units at all times or else I'd lose my scholarship. Um, and that money they give you on top, it's not enough to be on your own. Um, it's not going to be enough to just living um, without a job. So that was, <laughs> that was a little bit tough. And another thing is that a lot of times uh, classes are weirdly credited. <laughs> So a uh, university will take your classes and credit them when you transfer. And this is what happened to me. So I had four years of experience in Photoshop and Adobe and Illustrator, like Premiere Pro, After Effects. Like I was, I finished a degree in that. Like I was trying to be a web developer, like graphic design, illustrator, whatever that is. I've had plenty of experience. I've had like done commissions for companies like i've done logos like i've done all this stuff and i was transferring to university and they were credit me for each class to be like oh if you took math you don't have to take math here anymore if you took english you don't have to take english there here anymore and so specifically for my major for some bizarre reason they just didn't credit any of my um photoshop stuff and so they placed me in a beginner Photoshop class. And when I tell you beginner, I mean like I was like first class. They're like, okay, here's how you make a new layer. <laughs> Click. So if you want to pick a color, you have to go here. Like it was um, as if I opened Photoshop for the first time. But I tried to speak to the school and I was like, hey, um... I'm kind of a little bit ahead of that. Can I just transfer to the like second Photoshop class or third, like whatever you want me, like can you just credit four years of my experience at least as one class? And they were like, yeah, sure. We'll look into it, blah, blah, blah. And um, because this, the tuition, I have to be uh, 12 units at all times. Like I have to take four classes all times, full time. Um, that means I have to drop out from the Photoshop class and then I have to be enrolled in another class. And they didn't let me because that class was full. So then I was stuck with extra 
a class for Photoshop and I was just sitting there and doing nothing all day because I finished the assignments in like first five minutes of class and then it was a waste of time for four months um, which is okay I found myself like how to do other stuff and I was watching tutorials so I had more free time and I was able to focus on other classes but just in general like sometimes university it's not in their best interest <laughs> to actually uh, push you forward it's in their best interest to keep you there kind of like as long as possible and just give you random classes to just keep going and um, that is just one of those things that I think art schools should get better at like if I spend five years of my life trying to do furry art <laughs> I would have been making seven thousand dollars right now like a month easy but instead of that they told me oh you should take oil classes oh you should study statistics oh you should do u.s history of like 18th century which is great for general learning but it basically ended up not giving me any actual skills that would help me to be within the job environment and that's why i'm telling you when uh, you should take specialized classes. I mean specialized classes. Like, if you really want to be a concept artist, pick a thing. Like, you love, I don't know, character art. Take every single character design class possible from Brainstorm or, like, other classes. Or find a mentor who's, like, the best guy who does armor. And just study him and talk to him and feedback from him and like whatever you do and then you're gonna get a job at a company doing armor stuff um but art schools are very much like here's one class of printmaking here's one class of illustrator here's one class of premier pro here's one class for it's just all over the place and in my personal opinion classes and university should prepare you to get a job right that that makes sense like you go to school you pay thousands of dollars of debt and then at the end you get a job i'm not saying it should be the any job you want or the best company in the world or whatever but i think it should be accounting for something right you, you should be able to get a job any job in the art industry like something so you can start and you can develop your skills or whatever but from what I um, went through with my six seven years um, that pretty much didn't happen <laughs> I, I've taken any every class possible um, that was told to take and I am not prepared to do any of those jobs uh, fully like I'm sure someone can hire me probably part-time as an intern um, but as a actual specialist in anything even web development or logo branding like nothing I can't do none of those things because I was just not prepared and I spent six five years of school <laughs> and time and um, it was great experience and I'm not gonna regret it I like had fun that's just something to watch out for is you should really know what you want and if you don't then university is just gonna put you on the spin and tell you like you should do all these 300 things in the world and maybe you will like one of them like that's <laughs> that's their motto I'm like just like do all of these things and maybe it'll be nice but that's it that is it nothing else is gonna come out of it um so that's my like <laughs> small small quote-unquote rant about art schools and i really was all over the place and every single topic that i cover could be a whole separate video for like 30 minutes um but hopefully this gives you like an idea as to um why you should not go to art school if it's for you and just in general like just like experience of how um that stuff works and please leave a comment if you finished the video i applaud to you <laughs> like good job i would not be able to sit through all of that unless i draw and i listen to something um but yeah like let me know if you have any questions or comments and share your experience with universities 
and uh, how you went to school. So hopefully I will be able to condense it even more and maybe three, four years from now, I'll, like make another one, which will be more precise, more concise and more useful to people. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening and watching. Um, happy painting and don't give up on your art career. Just get better at choosing what you want. <laughs>